In the heart of the Sumatran rainforest, there is a type of gigantic flower famed for its pungent odor. But rather than smelling of roses, this one smells like a corpse. But you don't have to travel there to experience it. Uh, we are here at Kew Gardens in London to smell it for ourselves. We're here at Kew Gardens to talk to an expert about the Amorphopalus titanum, the Titan Arum. Hello, welcome. Hi. Can you tell us uh, who you are and what you do? Hi, I'm Solène. I am the uh, supervisor of this glass house, which is the Princess of Wales Conservatory at Kew Gardens. And we're stood in front of the absolutely colossal flower bud of the Titan Arum, which is also called the corpse flower. Can you tell us why it is called the corpse flower? Yes, so we are in the tropical rainforest of the glass house and behind us is the flower bird of the Amorphophallus titanum. Mm -hmm. It's called the corpse flower because when it opens, it smells terrible, like there's a dead, rotten animal somewhere and you can smell it across the whole glass house. What happens when it blooms? Why is it such a momentous uh, occasion? So the flower, it comes from a tuber which is dormant and when it grows, the bird come out of the ground and we're not sure whether it's going to be a leaf or a flower. And it takes two, three months to fully develop to this size and then it will open through one day and smell and it would stay open roughly, it would start closing the next day and stay like that for two, three days, mm -hmm. and then it would collapse. So it's all that effort and that momentum for just an opening and then a collapse. And why does it uh, work like that? What is it trying to attract uh, with its rotten uh, smell? So it comes from Sumatra, which mm -hmm. is an island in Indonesia, and where one would grow, the next one might be kilometers away. So it has to be quite big and pungent in order to attract a pollinator, which would be a fly, that has visited a previous flower kilometers and kilometers away in order to have the cross-pollination. It takes a lot of energy to share that smell across the island, and so it needs a lot of energy to be that big. And the big paddocks that you can see, the green part, which is going to turn yellow, uh, acts like a chimney, so it eats up, and that helps to spread the smell even further. So tell us, how widespread is this flower? Is it in need of protection? This plant was uh, extremely endangered. Uh, it's uh, really specific to Sumatra Island, so it's not widespread across um, the globe. Um, therefore, it's endangered because if something happened on the island, then it would disappear. Uh, but nowadays, it's been spread across Botanical Garden. We have a few specimens, which allows us to have more than uh, one in flower this year but every year we usually have one flowering. That's fascinating. And you had uh, one flowering uh, last week, very recently? Yes, so last week we had one that opened and it's already collapsed and gone back to our nursery. And now we've got this one that we're waiting to open, maybe tomorrow, who knows, they always keep us guessing. So we get to the point that the flower has been cross-pollinated, uh, um, the flower dies, what happened next? Uh, so in our glass house, once uh, the flower collapsed, it would go back to our nursery. In the tropical nursery, we've got a few of those plants kept in pots and they, when they, they're repotted every year mm -hmm. uh, into their pot to change the soil and bring new nutriment. And then when they come into growth, whether they're a leaf or a flower, we decide to bring them into the glass house. We need to bring them when they're a bird, because if not, they can't go through our doors. Um, so we need to be sharp on that. And then once they're inside, we need to have them to grow and then collapse before we can get them out again. When they grow, they would either be a leaf or a flower. When you grow an Amorphophallus from seed, it takes 12 years to reach the size of flowering. So it would have a leaf for 12 years and then it goes dormant every year. So grow the leaf for a growing season, then dormant, a leaf, dormant, and then a flower. After it flowers, it uses so much energy that the tuber itself shrinks and would need more years of just leaf in order to bring back that energy into the tuber and flower again. But also the leaf is... Uh 
quite enormous and it looks like a tree. Yes, so the le- it's just one leaf, but it's a gigantic leaf that can grow up to seven meter tall. And it looks like a tree, so it's a green stem with mottled pattern. And this is to deceive herbivores uh, from eating it because it makes them think, oh, this is hardwood, don't come and chew in it. And then you've got the leaf that spread at the top. What are some other interesting facts about uh, this uh, really, really peculiar uh, plant? So when it first uh, opens and it smells really bad, it attracts those flies uh, to come in that think that there is something to eat, something rotten. And they come in and that's when the female part of the flower, the female part is receptive first. Then it would stop being receptive, that's when the plant stops smelling. And then it would release the pollen. So the male flower would release their pollen, which would fall on those flies that would then fly off to the next smelling plant and pollinate the female receptive flowers. So when we have to do the pollination ourselves, we do have to go and stick our head in there when it's smelly with the pollen we've collected from our previous flowers. Thank you very much for taking us on this uh, little journey about uh, this uh, incredible plant, uh, the Amorphophallus uh, titanum.